Hi, my name is Robert French. My name is Vincent. My name is Kelly Ann. My name is Ari. Hi, my name is Benjamin Donnelly, and I'm taking part in a Mojo workshop at Shebek. Shebek Mojo is a brand new mobile journalism program that's accessible to people living in remote communities like ours, 250 kilometres northwest of Brisbane. Shebek is an isolated community and Mojo is a great asset to that. It gives you great communication tools that stay within remote communities and give our younger generation a voice. Situated on the edge of Bajelki Peterson Dam and formerly called Paramba, Sherberg was founded in 1901 as a mission settlement. They had the wrong call. And if they went prison, when their names were called out, they were taken to jail. Many of us kids who live in Sherberg also hated roll call because we found school to be boring, so we dropped out. We don't go to jail for that, but we do miss out on our education, and that's a high price to pay. We weren't providing training that was exciting enough, though, that um, they would be um, motivated to come along and, and stay in literacy and literacy training long enough that they would benefit from it. Keeping us at school by giving us real journalism and technical skills is what the Mojo Project is all about. Adult literacy and numeracy needs to be relevant because adults need to see that they can use skills right here, right now. If you had like uh, sprains or broken bones, they'd actually use the leaves to treat that. So we were thinking, how can we better provide for our Indigenous students? And one of our senior educational consultants um, had been to a conference where she was um, listening to Evo Burham. You'll do, you'll do a voiceover, you'll do a piece to camera, you'll do some overlay, some actuality, you'll do an interview and you put it all together. I think this could be the right mix. We've got traditional Indigenous education is about storytelling and very contemporary technology. Mojo provides literacy and numeracy training by providing media training right where it is needed in remote Indigenous communities like ours. Have you got a story to tell? Something Indigenous people have been asking for since the launch of OSAT in 1985. And the government rolled out these BRAX units and they were meant to be able to make local content. Well, the problem was there wasn't enough training. And I'm taking part in a Mojo. We've actually tied this program, this Mojo program, with the TAFE. We are a group of Mojo trainers. So you get proper training and proper support, and that's the big difference. Mojo as a tool for creating a locally politicised voice in marginalised communities is really useful. There's powerful journalism skills and technologies enabling uploads from the most remote communities. But providing these skills and technologies is only a first step. Embedding them into education you just start at any time. is really critical. But for that to become a reality, Evo first had to train the trainers. Mojo's about citizen journalism, more than just citizen witness. Margaret is a local teacher from Narundri TAFE. Tim Fry and David LeMay are teachers from Toowoomba TAFE. Crucial to the program's success was DK and Angela, who were our local mentors. Christy Smith made up the team of trainee trainers. Just always give it a couple of seconds at the end. Eva knew from past Mojo workshops he'd run that for this to work, they all had to get the same training we Mojos would get. We all know, especially the people who are supporting them, that actually know how to do it. Oh, there's always a fear of maybe I won't be good enough or, you know, maybe, I don't know, there's a million of those ifs. So what we need to do is to use the grey handle at the end to get rid of that word so. This is the first time technology, it's most of it's gone over my head. Hit play. Editing is tricky. <laughs> Another mob who'd heard about Mojo was a group of local elders who turned up to find out what all the fuss was about. Just a second, I'll be able to show it to you on the telly. Hi, my name is Chantelle and I'm taking part in a Sherbrooke Mojo program. And what we do is a multimedia storytelling program that targets young youth. We will give them the skill and technology to create the own local voice. And for that we use, we use an iPhone, an iPhone 5. We put the iPhone into an MCAM light, a little enables you to pan and tilt smoothly, it's got a bit of weight to it. On top of that, we add, we add a little a light, a rechargeable light. We also add a microphone into that. And that's our Mojo Kit 101, the basic Mojo Kit. I'm trying to get our children to learn because we didn't have that opportunity when, when we were going to school. To interview some of the elders or get the history of the ration shed. My name is Danielle and I am at the Russian shed at Sherberg to find out 
the history of this community. So they can draw that and uh, tell Absolutely. their children. The iPhone kit was a big hit, and like everyone, our aunties wanted to play with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and when I went down to Brisbane, I was telling my auntie all about it. I said, Auntie, Auntie, truly, your phone will go really good in there. <laughs> <laughs> the sure. stories are going around the table at our house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what about you, Liz? No. <laughs> they could have yarned away all day, but there was still lots to be done. The ambulance driver asked Evo what he had for breakfast. Evo's mojo program is focused exactly on what the aunties wanted and what we're really good at storytelling. I think once we get the old people in working around the iPhones with us doing videos with them, I think it's going to become real great. That's exactly why I chose to focus on traditional storytelling for my first story and one of our most important dancers, the Quabri. I'm on my way to the Bunya Mountains to film my first Mojo story. This story is being filmed on our people's dance at Wabri, which was carried out every two years when the Bunya Nut fell and our neighbouring tribes came and gathered together. A lot of people look at Sherberg's negatives. Not a lot of them look at the positives. And there are a lot of things to do around here, like the bush. We're surrounded by it. And as growing up, my family always took me out into the bush, to the rivers and stuff, teach me a bit about culture and just to have a bit of fun. The learning skills for the young kids, they used to do some of the, um, the gathering with aunties or uncles or whatever in modern times with technology and that, like, like the cameras, mate. That's a learning tool for them. A tool that can help us create a journalistic skill base right here in our community. It gives a person a voice, but it also, that voice, if the person's really smart enough, they can use that voice to speak for their community and they can put it all in, in films and videos and they can take it to the news stations and whatnot or they can put it up on the internet. It's exciting, traditional Aboriginal education is storytelling. So to do that in the modern, um, using modern technology in the modern world is just a, a wonderful um, combination. An iPhone. So we could start with a piece to camera somewhere, if you decide. A bit like our culture and our dancers. Hey, I'm DK. Mojo stuff looks easy. Hi, I'm Angela. Oh, I'm not Oh, shut up. But there's more to it than meets the eye. Tafe at Sherberg today. I knew that the, the journalism side of things was a different way of storytelling, and so I was, you know, expecting to learn about that process. Then you need a, a series of shots. I learned some structure to actually form my own stories very quickly. But I also started to learn or see the differences between journalism and other kinds of storytelling. There's listening and storytelling skills, recording video and audio, and then arranging all that material into an edit. I feel like there's still a lot, I've got a lot more sort of practice to do. There's always a finite time for learning and in my case a finite time for teaching so we all get a little anxious, especially when the skills that we're teaching are skills that can get people a job and empower an individual and a community with their own local voice. I guess we'll know how well the training and the learning went tomorrow when the mojos arrive. We were really excited to learn to mojo but we hadn't worked as a group before so we were a little anxious. Mr George turned out there is mucking around with his phone and showing something on the phone to them people there. These people are still standing around yarn and over here. Am I finished now? <laughs> but it didn't take long for people to get with the program. You're very good for this. And I've been wondering who's reporters. <laughs> That's what we're here for. You know, we advocate for education and training and definitely that people are coming out of our college with, with a set of skills that ultimately leads them to, to employment and gives them a, a whole lot more greater chance for employment opportunities out there. Come on, everyone, inside. Later on or now? In the training room, Uncle Bert was already waiting. He must have got up at the crack of dawn and he looked deadly serious. Get mobile phones back, please. We can't afford to be distracted while we're learning something. I say, welcome to country. In the tongue or the language of the Waka Waka people, I say to you, Wanjera. 
Wanjira mean welcome. Wanjira mean good day. What does it mean, eh, son? What does it mean? If I ask you a question, eh, and someone over there giggles, eh, you know what they're doing? They're being a clown, and they want you to be a clown too. So don't take notice of them. You turn your ear, eh, you turn your ear off to them, and you learn and you be deadly. And the best thing about learning, eh, is using this ear, binna. Binna is your ear. And journalism really is about, eh, listening. Listening, like a lot of you here, you've missed a lot of schooling. So, catch up to it now, while you've got the opportunity. Ask me to write an answer to something, you know what I'm gonna say? Yeah, what do I have to do that for? Because I mightn't be able to do it. But you guys, eh, you're gonna have someone within this Mojo program, okay, teaching you. So grab the opportunity while you can, eh? <clears throat> grab the opportunity. And please, don't be shy. Like you told us from the start, maybe one day someone will come look at our stories and want us to work from. And then when we make it big, then yeah, we can turn around and put it all out there. Eh? Treat each other like brother and sister, okay? And what we all are, we're Murray people. And the thing about our Murray people is caring and sharing. I enjoy is, you know, encourage them to show a bit of sight and, you know, encourage them to do what's right. Oh, I want to tell about, like, the life of staying in Sherbrooke, eh? It's not as bad as what people think it is. Our elder, Nana Hader Simpson, reads the book called Bud Butto's Garden. It talks about the healthy colours of a porcupine's garden, which shows our young generation it can be easy and fun to eat healthy. Lived here most of my life. Um, this is where my grandfather's people were originally from, the Waka Waka tribe. And this place is home and always will be home. When another race of people came to this country, right, one of the first words that they taught our people was shame. So while we was being shame, okay, and one wouldn't say anything or wouldn't do anything about it, they stole our land. They took our land. They took our culture. They took our language. You might think it's hard or you might think, oh, you know, what the hell I'm doing here, you know? Oh, I don't want to turn up today. Oh, I don't want to go back after lunch. Put it in, in your head, eh, that you're going to do it. And you're going to do it. Mainstream media's been here a lot lately to, um, mainly focus on the bad things in the community, like um, the floods, the fights, the drugs, the alcohol. But there's a lot of positive things to show from this community, and Mojo's the way to do it. I know this amazing character called Lewis, but what's the story about Lewis? Is the story that Lewis is a dancer? Because we're only telling a short story. It's a little easier to tell stories. It's a bit like when I was learning to read. I was from Croatia. I didn't understand the language properly. They don't have to do as much writing. You do a little bit of writing and a bit of pictures. And effectively, it's this new language, this new digital language. And what, what Mojo tries to do is actually address a collective community philosophy, a eudaimonic philosophy. Uh, we are a group of Mojo from Sherbrooke learning to tell digital stories. Eudaimonic is just a fancy way of saying working together. And that's what we had to learn to do next, by helping each other develop our stories. Yeah, I wanted to do an interview and just get the glimpse, if I can, of the stuff that they did have back in them days. Yes. Interviews like the locker room and... Was he on to do the dance this weekend? Teamwork is everything. Um, what could you do without a team? <laughs> um, yeah, I reckon teamwork plays a big role in what everyone does in an everyday life. My job is about a big, big teamwork. I was waiting for this day to come. <laughs> yeah. Once the trainers were happy, our stories were shaping up. It was time to learn about the technology. Today is the first day that Sherbrooke and Mojo students have received our Mojo kits. These kits will be used for videos, editing, voiceovers and images. How many to use this now? <laughs> Is it just focusing? And when you get, uh, when you get the mobiles in front of you, you know, it's, it's exciting. 
a little bit of the face and then pull out to reveal the two shot. Learning it, what you can do with it, you know, um, it's amazing, yeah. Four, four to three seconds, go right. Look, I love riding. I love riding all the way through school. I think the main reason why I'm here is because of the technology. It works through um, the fact that it's tactile and they can press buttons and do stuff and they love that. Uh, the other reason it works is it's the hedonic appeal of it. That's an iPhone 5. Using a contemporary technology um, that would help them get interested and um, come along and in the background be improving their literacy and numeracy without really even knowing it. Effectively, it's this new language, this new digital language. An exciting new language that involves many traditional journalism skills like learning to interview. What hopes do you have for the church? We're targeting the children at the moment. What is your orders going to with the whole uh, sort of Australia type thing? We Why is it important? We always like to talk about the past, our things were years ago and how far we've come. And what benefit? Do these kids get out of this? One-on-one -on -one mentoring um, from our Indigenous Education and Employment Coordinators. Um, and that will be ongoing. We'll come out to community three times a term. What is it about your job that you like? Bringing back the, the cultural landscape that was there before. This place here, culturally, uh, is like a, my church. And where are we going to now? Uh, we're on our way to um, Tingura uh, State School. We're, uh... It's like you're doing like proper journalism, it's just mad. I like it, but I just want to be able to do it and be very good at it. To practice our presentation skills and increase our self-confidence, we learnt to do stand-ups in front of a camera. Hi, my name is Vincent, and I'll be doing my mojo story about Sherbeck. A story about this is a life. Yep, that's good, eh? Hi, my name is Lacey Leedy, and I'm taking part in a mojo workshop. Hi, my name is Jesse, and I'm doing my mojo story on the Sherbeck AIM chair. And I'm here at the Oswald radio station located at Sherbeck. Hello, our art centre is used for many things, but tonight we're launching a book, so come on and have a look. At first, stand-ups were really hard. So there you... But eventually, we got the hang of it. So there you have it, the story on the Bunyan Mountains and why it is so significant to our people. So come on up and enjoy the bush. See you next time. You may have heard of that old saying, when the filming stops, the filmmaking begins. Well, it's so true about the final phase of our training. The story edit. Get the blue ones be Finding it a bit tricky, it works. Yeah, and you can always move it. The first day, I didn't know what we was going to do. I, like, my head was just here and there. And then the second day, it all started to come to me, putting the media all together and the sounds. Bringing my music by the beach. Now, watch this. The hardest part would be just fiddling around with the, <laughs> with the voiceover and the video layout and music and that. First off, we needed the trainers to help. So you could introduce them. But soon they were walking away and we were left to help each other. You listen. You listen while you start talking and you look the number. Like dominoes, one land and then they taught the next person. That's where teamwork does come in in Marjo because the individuals are getting advice off the team. I need to find out the bottom up. They're going around to different people and asking them for advice of what they want on their story and how it could become better. Nah. <laughs> but it's like actually awesome, awesome. Just the music, turn the music down, that's the only thing. We were all friends or acquaintances before we started the program. Now, yeah, more like a um, family can sit there and talk to each other in trust and confidence. So, yeah. It's great the way power of mojo changes people. Um, giving other people opportunities that they never had before. And showing what they can do and make something of themselves. Reading and writing, numeracy, literacy, um, finishing school and show other people that I can do it. And that's just what we were about to do. Show everybody that we could make important stories and make our community proud. Ben did a story about a program designed to create strong leaders. Hi, my name is Benjamin Donnelly and I'm here at the Sherbeck State School. Today, the Queensland Reds 
are launching a leadership program. Identified a, a gap in the market for, for young kids aged around that 10 to 15 years age group where they're not getting the opportunity to have support. The schools aimed are to grow students who are strong, resilient, knowledgeable. It's all right. Emotional. Good. Share your story about ear health at everyone listening to our messages. And if that happens, you end up here in hospital like little Gilbert. But a little bit of prevention will stop that. It's been very important. Our children are being tested, so we're fixing the problems. Our oh, kids, that wasn't too bad. Just make sure your ears get checked and they're all clean. That was a real bad experience. So mad, in fact, that the Queensland Deadly Ears Program sent Shaya a thank you email. It's to you. She says, uh, thank you for forwarding this to us. I have forwarded it to the Deadly Ears team and to Dr Perry and the other team members at Sherberg. Best wishes for all your future endeavours. I like it better than what I like my movie. You've got great shots in there. It's deadly. For someone who's so quiet in class and then comes to your short film and it's... It's like, really, she talks? We were really inspired and went off to make positive stories on just about anything delivering important messages for our community. Safe Haven Patrol operates in Megan and Sherbig and is designed to keep young children off the streets at night. Oh, like we patrol in Sherbig from 4.30 to 1 o'clock in the morning. Keep on the kids if they wave a stand. Some kids out late at night we pull up, take them home and stuff. One of the ways our church engages with local kids is the Friday night dances. The Parkside Sawmill is a non-burn site. It's like where all of our waste products we actually use. Our chip it goes to um, hardboards in Ipswich. Today I'm at the Burke Bottle Lookout with the Sherberg Alternative Education Program. This is an important program that plans to get our students on track with their work and back in school. Um, what we're doing here with our young ones here, they, they learning the English and math, teaching them our tribal ways too, and that that's true to songs and language and dancing and that. These are students that have missed a fair amount of schooling. So these are children uh, in year seven, but academically they are... That's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a powerful video. Robbie probably doesn't realise how powerful right at this point in time, but he will when he sees it up on a big screen at, at you know, Queensland Showcase Awards and, and his name underneath that. I think that, uh, who knows where that leads? You know? Maybe next Baz Luhrmann. I don't know who that is, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so when you made that film, you came in with an iPhone 5 and you produced that. Yeah, but thanks to the power of Mojo, um, I feel great. Like, um, I don't know if you realise this, but um, before I started the Mojo, I couldn't actually hold a full conversation. Take those skill sets to schools and offer yourself as... Here's what I am, here's what I can do, can I come work for you? And that's exactly what Shay and a few of the other Mojos did. They took her ear health story back to the school where it was filmed. Pickle has been screening kids since 2008. The result was mad. I was just wondering, would you be able to show our children how you actually made it and what you did and how you put it all together? Yes, I'd love to. It's exactly what happened. Wide shot we did, eh? So we're going to go pass. Pass. W. W. Oh, very proud. Training Mojo's one day, trainers the next. Everything that they've learnt, they're teaching the students now, so they should be very proud of themselves and what they've achieved. I'm starting to see things differently. I can't really explain it, but I know, like, you can. And when I watch TV and stuff, I see it in a different way now. The voiceovers and the music and the pictures, and you know how they do it. It's mad. It was kind of mad. Back in Megan, I had my own mad luck. Celebrate the life that was given to her. You should be proud of that. I am. Would you like to come and, and, uh, and film uh, the Indigenous Championships uh, at the Mergen Golf Club. Love to. Love to? Yeah. Righto, it's a deal. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Can't wait. Me either.
We're looking for employment. That's our, our major um, focus with the BLMP program. That can lead to, to so many other things. Before we knew it, we were on the internet and global. How exciting. Online. Everybody can see it. <laughs> Yeah, it's really exciting. They are awesome students. And as often happens, when you go international, you're noticed at home. Now to a community story from one of the deadly mobile journalists, or mojos, from Sherberg. Shaya Watson caught up with the local community health team to see the work they're doing to help... Mojo has been a great experience on many levels. Most of all, because our stories have brought our whole community together. So we'll leave the final word to our Sherbert community. So in Mojo, well